Hi, welcome to an episode with Lattice Training. Today we're going to be resetting the boards. So you might have seen in previous episodes that we've got a nice splatter board set up behind us uh, and we've got the comp wall next door. So we're working quite hard at the moment to finish the build off and make sure that we get a really good long term set. So one of the things we're doing today is we've stripped the board at the end, which was the woody, and we're going to be working through uh, adapting the board to be a complete splatter, probably feet following, which might be a bit controversial for some people these days, and we're going to finish off the splatter board next door. So one of the first things that you need to think about when resetting a board is what holds you want to use. So we've got three main holds, which are the favourite holds that I'd like to use on the boards, both on the splatter and on the one at the end. We're actually going to go for a mixture of wood and resin this time on all of the boards, particularly the one at the end, so we can do feet following a bit better. So the wooden holds we've chosen are the hardwood holds. So we've got a massive mixture, you can see this one's quite big. Um, but I think it's really important to get a really big mixture of holds when you're going to be using them. And then the two resin holds we're going to be using uh, we've got a load of really nice uh, x cult holds from B to Climbing Designs, um, which we bought from them, which is a really nice set. Um, you can see this one's going to be quite hard, obviously, on the 45, but we're going to be using these in the comp wall next door and on the splatter as well. So loads of different variety. And then lastly, we've got a load of nice uh, art line holds from Dart Ventures. So once again, a massive mixture. You can see this one's a dual texture. Uh, we've got some really small holds from them as well, but it means we get a good mixture of the resin, uh, PU and wood on across all of the boards, which I think provides a really nice uh, variety in hold type and movement. So here at Lattice, we try to keep everything really clean, neat and tidy, very clinical, so it's organized all the time. It means we know exactly where everything is. We'd like to try and do that. So what we've done so far is you might have seen on the previous episodes that we have wooden holds and then our little power buttons. Little power buttons like this one. So two different sides. Uh, it means you've got a small side and a big side and there's two different sizes of this. And we tried to color code it. So we've done greys which are small, um, blues which are medium and reds which are bigger. And that's what we've done in the past to allow us to know what type of hold you're going to go for. Uh, it's been really good so far, but we're going to move on to a feet following method. Um, still using some of these next to some of the small wooden holds. Um, but we want to try and create a bit more variety. Um, so what we've done is strip the board, given it a quick sand. Um, we're not going to bother repainting today, um, but we are going to leave some of these power buttons on the bottom just for the kicker start. So what, we, what we're thinking about is maybe putting on the bigger holds that we're going to use first, um, and then putting the other holds kind of around them. And if you think about kind of small squares, you're trying to think about kind of having a pinch in there, a crimp, uh, maybe a jug, a sloper, basically just a good variety of holds um, so that that's spaced all around the board and you get lots of different holds to use. Um, other things to think about is making sure that holds you're putting on aren't interfering with other holds. So if a big hold is here and then you put a little crimp above it, you might not be able to get to the little crimp. Or again, if you're crimping, if a hold is going to be a crimp, feel how high your knuckles go on it. And if they touch another hold, we probably want to move that because it's not going to be comfortable when you're training. Another thing to think about is that once you've kind of set it and you have a play on it, um, just take your time and think about what holds you're using, what holds you're not, and holds that you don't end up using, maybe take off and add something else in. Um, you don't just have to keep them on all the time and you're trying to kind of evolve this, this training implement into a better implement. So the starting, um, set doesn't need to kind of stay exactly the same. You want to make it better and more usable um, for what you want from the board. So we've finished setting for today. Uh, me and Dave are going to have a play. As you've seen, the board's completely different now. So we're using different feet, different style of holds, and we've even put a volume, snuck on a volume at the bottom right. Uh, it wasn't my choice. But we've got a volume on there, so you're going to be able to use some smaller holds and some cooler moves. Um, we've also made some changes to the 30 board and the other splatter boards along the way. So like Dave said, we're going to play with it for a bit, test it out, see what holds are popular, which ones aren't being used in certain places, maybe move things around before putting it onto an app and then starting to record some of the problems. 